Hi folks. In our previous video we had a look at how to replace a thermostat in a Detroit DD powered heavy duty engine. I thought today we'd stick with the theme of the cooling system on these engines and have a look at how to replace the water pump. Not too long ago the water pumps on most heavy duty diesel engines were gear driven. An argument could be made that these were maybe tougher or longer lasting. But one thing that can't really be argued is that they were much more difficult and much more time consuming to replace when they did fail than more modern belt driven designs. It's become more common to see water pumps driven by belts and Detroit's are no exception. The water pump is located on the left side of the engine. It's mounted on the front of the oil coolant module. The water pump circulates coolant through the cooling system. Now listening to the process to replace this pump it's going to sound like I'm repeating myself from the last video. So I'm just literally going to repeat myself and you can hear it again. The first step will be to drain the coolant from the system. The location of the coolant drain can vary from manufacturers, but it's usually low in the system, often on the bottom of the radiator. There's also a couple of spots on the engine that drain coolant out of the block. Here you see on the left side of the engine, just behind the oil coolant module, there is a drain plug. If possible, it's a good idea to attach a hose or fitting to this plug because a lot of coolant drains out of the block. And it's best to direct it away into a container because if you just let it fall out on the side of the engine, it will run down over the ECM. The oil coolant module will also hold a lot of coolant inside of it. All of the coolant held inside the thermostat housing and water pump area are all going to be contained in there. So it's best to drain it out also. This can be done by removing the coolant drain plug you see here. Now on to the water pump itself. So how would you know that you need to replace the water pump? Well, here's a good example. The pump has a weep hole built in it, and when the seals inside start to go, coolant gets past them and leaks out of this hole to let you know that something's wrong. As you can see here, this one was pretty much destroyed. Running it like this for much longer would have probably had the entire front end of it break off and do some significant damage, so it's really something to keep an eye on. Of course, to properly inspect the pump by Detroit standards, you need to remove it and inspect the impeller for cracks or damage. But chances are, if you've gone that far, you're going to replace it. However, I have to give Detroit some credit here. The pump is designed very simply. It is very easy to service. It can be replaced in no time at all. All these things together would have you believe that they don't last. But really, they do. I've seen trucks with a lot of miles on them and still running the original water pump without a problem. So simple things to watch for are coolant leaks coming from the pump itself and check the bearing in the pump once in a while. To do this just loosen off the belt and rock the pulley back and forth. There should be very minimal play in it. Now if your pump has failed, here's how to go about changing it. In this example we're going to be looking at a single speed water pump. Some Detroit engines have variable speed water pumps but the process to replace them isn't much different. You'll just have to disconnect electrical connectors the main difference will be in removing the drive pulley from the water pump. To do this you'll have to use a pulley puller. But for the normal single speed pump it's very simple. You just have to remove these five bolts that hold the pulley to the water pump assembly. In this picture the drive belt is sort of half off the pulley but it's best to leave it on the pulley. It'll hold the pump steady for you and allow you to spin the bolts out. Once the bolts are out you can just pop the pulley off. Now the pump itself is just held on with nine bolts located around the outside edge of the pump. Just spin these bolts out and you can start the process of removing the pump from the oil coolant module. Now I say process because this is probably going to make you question yourself. You're probably going to count those bolts again and say did I get all nine or is there a tenth one hiding there? The truth is you've probably got all the bolts out but that pump really holds tight to the oil coolant module. The type of gasket they use is just like glue. It really, really holds on. Just take your time and get in there with a thin blade from a screwdriver or something like that and work your way around it. Just take care not to damage the surface that the pump sits against. Eventually it'll let go and pop out. Once it does, just clean up the surfaces where the gasket was sitting. Here we can have a look at the new pump. It comes with a new gasket already installed. Now you can bolt the new pump up to the oil coolant module and torque the nine mounting bolts up to 22 pound feet. Reinstall the pulley and the five mounting bolts, just finger tight for now. Then reinstall the belt 
and torque the bully bolts to 18 pound feet. Now you can refill and bleed the cooling system and you're pretty much done. So I guess that brings us to the end of another video. As usual, if you found this video helpful in any way, you can go ahead and hit that like button. You can subscribe to the channel for more useful videos like this. And as always, thanks for watching.